If you've ever tried to patch attachments inside of Power Apps, you'll know that it's typically not possible just by pointing the patch function to an attachment control. When you face this problem, there's typically two ways that we work around it. One by sending the attachments to a flow, or by using a form control simply to save the attachments back to the SharePoint list. You may try to avoid adding a flow to your app, and you may prefer to use the patch function to make highly customized forms manually in your apps. If that's the case, then this trick is for you. It doesn't really save you any controls on the screen compared to just using a form control, but it was something I found interesting that we couldn't do this and wanted to find a solution for it. Channel members have access to download the apps used in the videos, as well as the YAML code used in the components that I showcase. You can click the join button below the video if you're interested in supporting the channel. Attachments in SharePoint lists are a little bit strange in that they're almost like a little table inside the item, but the contents of that table follow a very specific format. On the screen here, we have two table controls. The first one simply points to a list, and the second one will point to the attachment column of the selected item from the first table. If we select an item from our first table and expand the items of our second table, we can see four columns, absolute URI, display name, ID, and value. The absolute URI, or URI in other words, is essentially the link to the attachment for this item. The display name is just the file's name and extension, and the ID is the identifier column of the list item, followed by the attachment name. Finally, the value is the actual contents of the file. It's important to note that the value column is pointed to an app res link. This value column is very important, and we'll come back to this in a moment. So how do we patch files to this attachment column? We first need the attachment control, which if you're not familiar with it, you first need to insert a form control. We're just gonna use this to add the attachment column to our form, and then we'll copy the attachment control out of the data card on the form and paste it onto the screen. We can delete the form at this point. There's some references to the data card and the form properties in the attachment control that we just copied, so we can go through and remove those references. With that done, let's talk about the data structure of the attachments control. When a file is attached to the control, we're given two fields associated with the file, name and value. The name is similar to the display name column in the SharePoint list item attachment, but the value column is unfortunately not compatible with the value in SharePoint. The SharePoint attachment is expecting that app res link, whereas the attachment control is providing the attachment data in a different format. So we'll need to convert this value from the attachment control into the usable app res link. And to do this, we'll need to insert a gallery. For the items of the gallery, we'll simply use the attachments property of our attachments control. Inside the gallery, we'll insert an image control and we'll set the image property of this control as this item dot value. The image control internally translates the attached files value property into an app res link. And this is what we can use to patch the attachment to SharePoint. We'll add a button to our canvas, and this is where we'll enter our patch function. We want to patch our list, and in this case, we'll patch the selected item from our table of records from SharePoint. And then for the information to patch, we'll enter the attachments column. For the attachments column, we want to patch a table, and for all the items in the gallery, we want to create a record for each attachment that has the same fields as our item attachments in SharePoint. The display name in this case will just be the name of the file. The absolute URI will be blank since this will be created when the attachment is patched. The ID will be the encoded name value from the attachments control. And for the value field, we'll input our image controls image property from the gallery. We'll close our formula and we can see that Power Apps is happy with that. We'd also want to reset our data card after adding the attachment. So we'll insert a reset function for that as well. And now we can go ahead and try this out. 
Before we do that, really quick, we'll just switch our table on the right back to the attachments column from the selected record of the table on the left. And that way when our new attachment gets added, we can see it reflected in the table. If we play our app, we can see one file is attached and we'll just go ahead and hit our button. It looks like that went through successfully and we can select our first item here and our attachment is listed in the attachments of that item. The file actually gets downloaded if we were to reference this later. Let's try multiple attachments now. Here I just have a couple screenshots and we can see those shown in the gallery as well. This gallery could just be a hidden gallery as we really don't need to display it. It's purely just used for that image control to convert the value of the file into the correct app res format. So this entire gallery can be made not visible. We'll select this test tip at the bottom here as this one only has one attachment currently, and then we'll go ahead and click our button to upload our files. You can see that went very quickly, and those files are reflected in our SharePoint item. We'll quickly hop over to the SharePoint side of things and open up that item. And down here, you can see our attachments are shown. An important thing to note is that this only applies to adding attachments to a SharePoint list item. You cannot remove attachments with a patch or remove function from what I can tell, but I'm still looking into how you can make this work. Let me know what you think of this trick in the comments below. If you liked the video, give it a like and get subscribed for future videos like this one. I hope you enjoyed and have a great day.